Hey guys, did you ever felt overly excited about something only to be disappointed the time you gave it a try? Because that's exactly what happened to me. So, at first glance, this laptop seems really fine. If you guys saw the IdeaPad 320S before, it feels relatable. Aluminum was chosen for the entire construction, providing an overall thin package comparable to Intel 13-inch Ultrabooks. It only weighs 1.1 kilograms, very ideal to carry around from meeting to meeting. It also feels more solid than the cheaper 320S. Despite not being a ThinkPad and not being black, it looks simple, bold, and professional. The only logo visible is only found on the top left corner on its back. Thin black bezels like these are always nice. Moreover, you can open up the hinge up to 180 degrees. I really wish this to feature a touchscreen, but it doesn't. The screen is of full HD resolution with stellar contrast, brightness, and colors, something you expect from a laptop of this price. I mean, with such deep blacks, streaming videos on YouTube or Netflix is pretty much a pleasure. Connectivity options aren't too bad. A few ports are still available. We have an audio jack and USB 3.0 on the right, while we have the USB 3.0 Type-C with power delivery, USB 3.0, and USB 3.1 Type-C with display output on the left. As you already see, another reason you want this laptop must be the AMD Ryzen mobile processors with Vega graphics. It sounds promising as much as the other but heavier options from both Acer and HP. The Ryzen 5 and 7 should be pretty much competitive against the 15W Intel 8th gen mobile CPUs in most scenarios, so I expect this laptop to excel at productivity. But when we tested the CPU on Cinebench and our video export test, this CPU appears to be either throttling or undervolted. But that's not our biggest concern. Even worse is the GPU that is supposed to be 2 to 3 times faster than UHD graphics suddenly struggles to run even the less demanding games. We've tried fiddling around, installing updates, basically everything, but it still failed to gain any increase in performance. Strangely, our stress test shows that this laptop is actually not struggling with heat. We know that Lenovo has been trying their best to install a dual aluminum fan system inside this very thin laptop, but related to the throttling problem I mentioned, it doesn't heat up more than 70 degrees. Apparently, it is the settings beside the slow single-channel memory that is trying to keep this laptop very cool limiting its performance level. Even though no one will buy the 720S exclusively for gaming and heavy workloads, a performance penalty of this magnitude is unacceptable. Aside from the slow 8GB single-channel memory frustration, this laptop has something great going for the price that is the up to 512GB M.2 NVMe SSD that can be said to be worth almost a third of the price, providing you with more peace of mind in terms of storage space and apps you can install without a high dependency of external drives or memory cards. Also, I don't see a lot of Intel-powered laptop having this much SSD on a similar price. As a higher-end model, IdeaPad 720S also features a fingerprint sensor on the right corner, separate from touchpad. Not the fastest, but still a plus. Typing on the keyboard feels normal with shallow but soft key travel. Not as comfortable as any ThinkPad, but also not bad at all. It comes with two-stage illumination. Meanwhile, touchpad is also very comfortable with solid feel and accurate response. After some time browsing and watching videos, the battery only lasts 3 to 4 hours on average, far under the endurance of comparable Intel Ultrabooks we've tested so far, which means AMD or Lenovo might have to catch up in terms of power management in Ryzen Mobile. So, this 45W adapter better be with you all the time. Finally, the stereo speakers here kinda reflect the good GBL branding. Honestly, I was totally underwhelmed on how this laptop performs, as we expect it to fight 8th gen Intel Core mobile processors with entry-level discrete graphics in a compact package. Back to reality, the benefits are minimal with some trade-offs in battery life. Putting things aside, this laptop still has a few things under its sleeves. From the excellent display and build quality, also a large half terabyte SSD, which seems to be very good for the price. 
Dear AMD and Lenovo, if you're watching this, please prove us wrong if you think we did not review this correctly. As long as you can't prove it, we don't really see a lot of reasons to choose over its Intel counterpart of the same model. So what do you guys think? Are Ryzen Mobile and Ultra Portable form factors still too good to be true? Please comment down below for discussion. If you like this video, don't hesitate to like and share, and as always, have a nice day.